So I studied each aircraft that I thought was really a good aircraft in detail, the sizing, the shape, the look of it, the whatever I could get information, the handling characteristics, the speeds, etc., etc. And from that, I mm, set out my, you could say, say my list of wishes for this aircraft. And then I strove to meet those list of wishes by designing the aircraft appropriately for that. And so we started from scratch, absolutely. With initially, I just started sketching things on a piece of paper, having, getting a feel of what I think it would, should look like. And then um, slowly as time went on, it took shape. Yeah, nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you here on Zoom. Where are you based? I, I'm based in Cape Town. Okay. And um, and the business uh, is in Johannesburg. Oh, I so, see. Okay. Mm. So I commute, but mostly I work remotely, and which you can these days so easily because um, you know the internet is so good. So, Amazing, yeah. yeah. Amazing that we can do that. But now you're the director of Sling. This yes. the, and and. Uh, tell me about these aircrafts because it's uh, fascinating. I saw that on on Instagram, and somebody told me actually about that, and I just thought, how amazing! Yeah. So, um, well, uh, you, you know, it kind of it's kind of started with a dream, actually, not a dream dream that you like sleeping and dreaming, but just an idea that I had. And and in two thousand and five, we started designing and developing the first one, and the first one was a two seater. Um, aircraft you sit side by side and it's got a low wing um, and um, you know we started with that and initially we were just three employees and then okay. later on we developed a four-seater aircraft and after that a more sophisticated four-seater and now more recently um, okay, a high wing four-seater. I, I want to stop you there if you say we started so I mean, not not everybody, everybody, um, a lot of people have the dream to fly, but where did you get the experience for building an aircraft? I mean, that's, that's uh, okay, something yeah. else, isn't it? So what happened is um, I started out initially as um, a microlight pilot instructor. I was teaching people to fly oh. microlight aircraft in in uh, in Europe they call them ULM in some places. In the United States they call them ultralights, but they small light aircraft and um, very light aircraft. And um, and I taught people to fly, and I had a flying school. So I started flying in 1984, and then in about 1990, I started designing and developing my own microlight aircraft. And my background is engineering with a little bit of architecture thrown in. Wow. And so, and I've always been a designer and all my life, I've been designing and making technical things all my life. And so um, once I'd been flying for a few years, I decided to design and develop my own microlight aircraft. And I had a factory doing that, which I sold in 2003. And then in 2005, I started designing and developing the sling, the sling range of aircraft. And when I say we, it was I employed an engineer and a draftsman. And it was just the three of us initially for the first uh, about two years. And then my, my current business partner, James Pittman, joined me in 2007. And... We flew the first aircraft that we'd been working on in 2008. So it was from 2005 to 2008, and then we went into production in 2010. So okay, but now for, from the micro light to the to to these uh, sling aircraft, um, so uh, just explain to me for for the micro light you have a your the micro light license. But it's not yes. the same as a as a say a private yes. pilot license or what? Exactly, it's a it's no. an it's an easier license to achieve. I mean, those aircraft, the small light aircraft, are as difficult to fly as the larger aircraft. 
they're just less complex. Okay. You know, there's, there's less instrumentation, they fly slower and so on. And generally, they have a tubular frame and the, and the surfaces of the wings and the fuselage and whatever else is generally cloth. It's, it's, it's the same cloth that sailboats use. It's called Dacron or similar materials. Mm-hmm. And they use the same, that kind of material <clears throat> to cover the aircraft and to cover the wings and so on. Generally, that's usually what is, is the case. Whereas um, the aircraft that we make now are... Uh, almost exclusively aluminium. Although the, the very latest one that we make, which is a, a high-wing four-seater aircraft, has got the fuselage, the main structure fuselage, made out of fiber, carbon fiber, and fiberglass. And so wow. it's a yeah. So it's a it's a little bit of a departure for us, and um, and it just allows us to make a slightly more sophisticated aircraft. So yeah. Okay. And it's uh, so. Uh, well, the dream was then to to make aircraft available for mm. most people. Then, because uh, to to buy something like that is very expensive. Yes, yeah, it, it, it is. And the the dream was to to make an aircraft um, that I would like to fly, basically, okay. and. Because I'd been dealing with um, and, and, and had a distributor in the United States selling our microlight, ultralight aircraft into the United States, and I'd seen how big the market was in the United States, I decided that I would um, set the whole business up and the aircraft and what have you to meet the requirements for selling into the United States. And if you if you meet those requirements, then basically you can sell to the rest of the world as well. But they they sell, um, or they the, the Americans um, build a lot of aircraft themselves. It's, it's called experimental aircraft in the, in that country. And um, so we, right from the start, designed the aircraft to be sold as a kit, or as okay. a what we call a quick build, which is a partly assembled kit. Or as a ready to fly. Um, many of the competitors that we have in the two seater aircraft market, and, um, and they make aircraft, and where they only build, they build them themselves, and they make ready to fly aircraft only. They don't make kits. Whereas oh, our our business, right from the beginning, was set up to produce kit aircraft, and that was also why we chose aluminium as an as a medium to make the aircraft out of because people that build kits like to work with aluminium. In the United oh, States, it's called aluminum. <laughs> oh, okay. But it sounds amazing. I mean, I, I just, um, for me, I can't get my head around it that mm. you, you think an aircraft, this it's so complicated to build. But if you say now that they, you, you actually designed a kit so that the person can assemble it themselves yes is that not uh, uh, i mean the, uh, for the for the safety aspects of it uh, is is there a lot of things that that people need to know before they do that actually you know you don't have to have any experience at all to buy mm-hmm. a kit from us and build it but there are lots of safety steps built in automatically the first thing is that the aircraft um, comes 100% complete. You get every single nut, bolt, rivet, brackets, rib, skin, everything. Comes. Seats, the upholstery, the leather, the carpets, the everything you get from us. So you don't have to make anything. So we don't have a situation where somebody's arbitrarily making some part or other in their garage. Oh, okay. That's the mm-hmm. starting point. Second thing is, of course, um, we supply the the kits with manuals, assembly manuals, so that you, you you follow it step by step by step, like if you have a Lego set or something like that. Mm. And um, and then the next thing is, of course, right in the beginning, that the aircraft are really properly designed and tested beforehand, so that you have that assurance that you're getting a proper machine. Um, and then the, the 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 final couple of steps are that. 
um, you have to have your kit as you assemble it. Every stage that you go through, you have to have it inspected and signed oh, off okay. by mm. and by somebody that is qualified to inspect it and sign it off. Um, of course, every um, almost all um, civil aviation authorities around the world, from the different countries, the United Kingdom or various countries in Europe or um, Canada or Brazil or wherever, they go through our, our testing and our design data in great detail. Oh, okay. And then they will tell the people in their country, okay, we have checked this out. We have maybe test flown it. Sometimes they want to test fly the aircraft as well. We've checked out the design. We've been to the factory. We've done some test flying ourselves. We now say that you, as kit builders in this country, can now assemble these aircraft, provided oh, you meet okay. these standards. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are lots of inspectors around the country that you can call on to come in and inspect stage by stage. And so during the build, I guess you would have something like 10 inspections that would happen oh, during see. the course okay. of the build. And then for the test flying, there are many countries in the world where they would want a specific test pilot to do the initial test flying. Oh, I see. Okay. And those guys are experienced test pilots, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and now, uh, what, where uh, where did you get the inspiration for the design? Um, I guess. Yeah, it was was it was actually it was a process. It was. Just um, having been in aviation before and having been to different air shows and having flown lots of different aircraft um, and had done uh, um, lots of long distance flights and competition flights and so on, I, I, I knew pretty well what I thought was a good aircraft. Oh. I then studied the best of all the aircraft in the category I was going to start in, which was a two-seater so I studied each aircraft that I thought was really a good aircraft in detail, the sizing, the shape, the look of it, the whatever I could get information, the handling characteristics, the speeds, et cetera, et cetera. And from that, I um, set out my, you could say, say my list of wishes for this aircraft. And then I strove to meet those list of wishes by designing the aircraft appropriately. For that and so we started from scratch absolutely with initially i just started sketching things on a piece of paper having getting a feel of what i think it would, should look like and then um slowly as time went on it, it took shape and um and one of the things that is a little bit different with our aircraft and and um, is that um it looks really good it's a good looking aircraft and 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 that comes from my background as well, having studied a little bit of art and a little bit of architecture, where um, the aesthetics of what it, whatever you're doing is so important for people, and particularly for aircraft, because if, you know it's much easier to love your aircraft if it's a thing of beauty than oh, if it's if yeah. it if it's a, it's a, it's an ugly thing, but it it flies okay, but it's ugly, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but I looked, I saw the, uh, I mean, I see the pictures and, but it also looks like as if it's a, it's a great community, you know, a lot of people um, now involved in this and, and owning and, mm. and put, uh, you know, the, the pictures that you put on on Instagram, it's amazing to see. Yeah, yeah, we have, um, you know, when I started this, I never really thought um, about the community so much. I thought about um, developing the aircraft and and making, I wanted to make basically. I set myself a standard. I wanted to make the best aircraft in the world. That was my brief to myself. And as time progressed and we started selling them more and more, of course we made friends with all of our new customers, and it just grew and grew and grew. And 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 our our customers love our aircraft, and they have created with us a community. And of course, we we have um, a kind of 
uh, you know, we 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 are not your con- conventional aircraft builder. We we are adventure builders. We we build adventure aircraft, lifestyle aircraft that you can get into and do all sorts of amazing things. Travel around the world or travel around your country, carry lots of luggage, have lots of you know, and, and an aircraft that flies incredibly well. And so, and so we developed this community around the world, and people follow us and love us and and. And mm-hmm. love our brand and love our aircraft and and we love them because we do all these amazing things with them and meet them every now and again. It's it's just it's just it's just been the most rewarding, rewarding thing to have all these wonderful mm-hmm. customers of ours around the world and everybody like banding together, you know, being feel, mm-hmm. feeling like it's a big family. Yeah, I, you get you absolutely get that impression when you look at these pictures, you know, of, of, and yeah. Um, yeah. But now um, I saw a documentary once about the the, the Spitfire and and uh, how the in, from the initial design how it changed every time that they and, and that they rebuilt the the newer um, models. Now is this also happening with Sling? Is it, do you can you see how mm. it evolves? Yes. Um, yes. Um, in the two seater, we're still making the same two seater almost exactly the same as we did right in the beginning. Um, and the four seater, we had a slightly smaller engine initially. And we, uh, we then the Rotex, the engines we fit are called Rotex. They're made in Austria and Rotex produced a, a more powerful engine for us, which suited us better for our four seater. And so we changed the design and, and upgraded it a little bit to suit this new bigger engine. And so, um, we have made those. That's the only big change that we've made on the four seater aircraft. It's really, an almost entirely new aircraft, because we had we, we wanted to match the aircraft exactly to the engine. But unlike Spitfire, where they're making lots of major changes to the aircraft because they were at war, they had to get the aircraft faster and mm-hmm. with bigger engines and what have you. Um, we, we don't have that pressure. But what we do do is as time goes on, if we can see an imp- a, a, an improved way to make a bracket or if we feel yeah. that we, we can make things easier to assemble by doing this or that or then. So small changes. So we make small changes all the time. And I, yeah. guess, I guess in the years ahead when there's new engines that come out, we'll, we'll uh, make – you know, if there's a bigger engine that comes out for the two seater, for instance, we'll make a change to that aircraft as well. But but the the changes are really small. Oh, okay. But do people now buy the? They can also buy the finished uh, aircraft, or is it just kits that they can buy? Yes. No. We we supply okay. the aircraft in three formats. Um, you can buy it as a kit, so you get uh, boxes of parts, lots and lots of parts. Uh, okay. And nuts and bolts and, and whatever everything that you need to assemble the aircraft. You don't need to go and buy anything except in your tools. Or you can get what we call a quick build, which is a partly assembled aircraft. Basically, most of the airframe is assembled. And when you get that aircraft, you put the engine on and the instruments on in and, uh, and you do the wiring and you put some of the controls in and things like that. Connect up the fuel lines and all that sort of stuff. So that's a quick build, so it's partly assembled. And then we've what we, we call is a ready-to-fly RTF. Um, that's a fully assembled, test-flown, and approved aircraft. And you get it um, as it is. It's nothing, nothing that you need to do. It's, yeah. And for those ones that we export like that, what we do is we, we, we fully assemble them here, paint them, do everything exactly correctly. Then... Time for export, we take the wings and the tail off and we put them into a container. So oh, okay. mm-hmm. in the country, it's going to, let's say, to the United States or to another country like Brazil. Um, the aircraft there would be pulled out of the container and the local distributor, our distributor, would put the wings on and help the chap, the owner with the registration in that country, getting the aircraft registered and then maybe doing the initial test flights and then handing it over to the customer. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, so for the, us, yeah. yeah. So for us, the most successful sales are where we've got distributors in countries because okay. it means there's somebody locally, um, local who's handling the 
the registration and the sales and the, and looking after customers, etc. Well, I can imagine that for for somebody who's really uh, you know has a love for aviation and and to build your own plane or to put it together from from the kit must be so rewarding then, mm-hmm. and then be yeah. able to fly it. Yeah, absolutely. I actually have got because I I'm. I'm working part time, and I I live in Cape Town now, so um, I'm a little bit remote from the from the factory. So I don't have access to the demonstration aircraft. We've got four demonstration aircraft at the factory. I don't have access to them anymore. So I've ordered myself a high wing kit, a sling four high wing kit, really, which mm-hmm. is supposed to arrive in the next ten days or so. So yeah. So you're going to build it then? I'm going to build it myself. I like doing that, and. It's hugely rewarding as well, as yeah. you say. It really is. It's like creating a piece of art, you know. When you finish it, you say, I, I did that, you know. Yeah. And, it's, uh, and it's, it's challenging to do it because it's many, many hours of work. I mean, it's not, yeah, I can not imagine. a small thing. Yeah. It's a, mm. yeah, it's a proper aircraft, you know. Mm. Mm. But now it's uh, also with your with your background, your engineering and your architecture background, uh mm. That must be for you then also uh, easier, I think, to build, isn't it? Yes, um, you know, I, yeah, and because I, I have actually built, you know, quite a few of these aircraft before, and um, and that's it's something that I've done all my life. You know, always when I was young, I worked on in the garage helping my dad, or when I got a car for the first time, I did all the work on the car myself, and and. So you you know you become technically competent, and I like doing that work. So um, yeah, so so it it is maybe of course easier for me, but, but um, yeah, anybody can actually do it if they mm-hmm. they just you just got to want to do it, you know. Oh yeah, and, of course. Yeah, and I can tell you that um, the, the 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 kits that customers put together, I'm I am absolutely delighted to see how how well they put them together and the quality that comes out from those aircraft. It's just amazing. And and often we've test flown them ourselves when the customers finish building them. Then we go to inspect and then we test fly and the planes fly beautifully. So how high can you fly with these planes then? Are they... Well, the, the highest, um, you know, normally you would fly up to a level where you, you don't need oxygen. Mm. So 12, so if you, if I can tell you, like Johannesburg, where we are in the factory is, I should say, is 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 at five thousand five hundred feet above sea level, mm-hmm. and so we would normally fly at something like eight, nine, ten thousand feet. That would be kind of the normal flight level, but you can fly up to twelve thousand feet without oxygen, and above that you need oxygen. Oh, okay. Uh, you can go for short time for short periods above that, just slightly above that. But you, there's there's regulations that say when you must need when you need oxygen, and um, but the highest um, that we've been to, and it was one of our our, our United States distributor, mm-hmm. they went up to twenty seven thousand feet. Wow. And they went. Yeah, it's just slightly lower than what you got all these airliners flying at. Yeah. And they want to do a. They want to do a. Um, a test flight in the next short while, I think in the next two weeks or something, try and go up as high as they can in, in one of our aircraft to just see how high they can go just out of interest. Amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's really high. But when you go up like that, you need to have an oxygen system on board. So oh, the aviation uh, oxygen mm-hmm. systems, which mm-hmm. you wear, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. But now, Mike, the name of the company, Sling, where, mm. uh, what's the story behind that name? <laughs> Actually, it's quite a it's quite a story because once James joined me after we'd been designing this aircraft for a while, we said, "Listen, we got to we got to find a name for our aircraft," and we came across you know there were all sorts of names that we thought of. A lot of them were like um, birds and 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 things like sabers and things like that. You know, and we we wanted something that was easy, rolled off the tongue easily. That um, could be um, didn't have some strange meaning in a different language, for instance, and um, so it was difficult for us to find an aircraft name that hadn't already been taken, and we didn't oh, want yeah. to have an aircraft name that was already taken. So we put out a 
com we, we, we set out a little competition where somebody could wear, win a headset in one of the local magazines. And we got a whole host of names that came in, but we didn't like any of them. And most of them were already taken with other aircraft. Even if the aircraft is no longer flying, it had been taken at some point in the history of flight by another oh, yeah. aircraft. So we, so James was sitting in the office and we were frustrated. And he said, what about Slingshot? And I looked it up and there was an aircraft called a Slingshot, an American plane. And so then he said, what about Sling? And so I looked it up, no aircraft with the name Sling. And we said, okay, oh, yeah. Yeah. that's it, Sling. <laughs> so that's how the name came out. And actually, it's quite a nice name. Um, you yeah. know, we changed, yeah. Initially, our business was called the Airplane Factory. Yeah. And, and of course, it, it didn't tie up with the name of the aircraft, which is Sling. So we've now recently changed, just changed the name of the business to Sling Aircraft. And, the, and our range of aircraft are all Sling, Sling, you know, it's a Sling 2, Sling LSA, Sling Tail Dragger, uh, Sling TSI, Sling High Wing. Yeah. Well, I think it's a cool name, you know. It's, it's really, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, it, it sort of, it, it goes with, with what, what you're representing, really, I think. it's Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, I think so as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But now, Mike, what what are the wishes now for you for the future? I mean, you've you've done a lot, um, and and you've yeah. built up this amazing company. Is there still something that you are? Uh, well, what's the next dream? Because this was a dream. <laughs> yeah, this is a dream. That yeah, yeah you know. Um, so uh, you know, there's two different things. Is one is 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 my adventurous life that I like to lead. Um, it's not crazy adventure, like trying to walk around the world, um, with just one liter of water or whatever, some oh, yeah, crazy yeah, stuff yeah. like that. No, it's not crazy stuff like that, but it's flying. So one is the flying adventures. Um, and so I think my wife and I are going to be doing a whole lot of flying adventures once we've got our own aircraft flying mm -hmm. and then doing some more flying adventures with my business partner, James, we get on men incredibly well and we, we we great adventure partners flying partners both very experienced pilots and then also making some more films we we made a whole bunch of films oh, okay. um which you can see you can you know if you go onto our youtube channel sling aircraft youtube channel you'll see them there um and then that's all post that's just the personal adventure stuff that we like to do like living the life that you want to live you know yeah. But for the business, um, you know, we already have quite a big business. I think we employ 375 people. Wow. We make, currently, we're making 18 aircraft a month. We, we, we're trying to get up to 25 aircraft a month by the end of this year. Um, and we, we are probably going to develop slightly larger aircraft as time goes on. So we're making two models of the four-seaters at the moment, so maybe later on the six-seater. Wow. We'll see. But yeah. we don't have we don't have any designs on the on the on the drawing board or anything yet for mm. that. Um, right now we have our hands full with just the products that we we have now. So yeah, that's where we are. And I, and and um I guess I'm hoping that you know the business keeps growing from strength to strength. Mm. And when I'm long gone, um Somewhere in the world, there's still sling aircraft being made. Amazing! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, that's the dream. I think, yeah, I think it's 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 such a apart from the the business idea that you had and 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 the dream. I think it's so amazing to see the people, the excitement, and the you know you can see that on the pictures and everybody sticking together. And like I say, this whole yeah. community feel. I think this is amazing, you know. And, for, for people in aviation, I've been talking to um, a few pilots as well, and this is really for me very intriguing. Is to, this is this aviation world, and and everybody's mm. so dedicated and so you know passionate about it. It's it's really yeah. lovely to see. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I mean, I couldn't have chosen a better you know um, career to go into. Um, because you land up doing something 
uh, building aircraft and developing a business and what have you around something that you love doing and flying just is just the most amazing experience i i i often you know i've told my kids they they fly with me but they, they don't have their own licenses yet um, i think some of them will do it uh, eventually um but i i've told my kids that i think by flying i've added 20 percent to my life so in other words i've got a full life plus 20 percent just because i fly so you know there's a because it just opens up so many different things for you of course you make lots of friends but you see the world from above you travel around the world easily um you have incredible adventures that you wouldn't normally have if you if you weren't flying and um and you enjoy this developing your skill as a pilot you know it's it's, it's like becoming a writer or becoming a painter or something like that you develop a skill so it's, it's really great yeah and it's it is uh, like one of the pilots also said it's it's you never stop learning you just keep mm. on um, learning and, and bettering yourself and what a great way to live life like that yeah absolutely yeah we do do you you, you know yeah you know you, you never stop learning even mm. even people with pilots with tens of thousands of hours if you ask them they say they're still learning there's mm. so much to learn you can never stop learning with this well mike um Thank you so much for your time. This is so interesting, a lovely company, and and I wish you all the uh, or, or the the best of not the best of luck, but but uh, best <laughs> times building your your aircraft. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, uh, and I hope to see a picture on on Instagram of your of your uh, accomplishment of your aircraft. But a uh, lovely, amazing company. It's it's wonderful work that you're doing, and and uh, and what an amazing dream. Yeah, that thanks so great. much. Yeah. Thank thank you so much. Thank you, Petra. Thank you for the okay. the invite to talk to you. It's a great pleasure, Mike. Okay, <laughs> and have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. When, I will. Whenever you whenever you fly to Vienna, um, remember me and um. Yes. And I would love to meet you in person. Okay, well, good yeah. luck with your Thanks. projects. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Yeah. Nice to chat to you. Lovely and, to talk um, to you yeah. too. Yeah. All the best. Thank yeah. you very much, Mike. Bye. Okay.